Okay, so that's the background on why GFR is important, all the different things we got controlling GFR. But what I want to come down to is down here. I'm just going to circle this right here because this is what I want to focus on. And specifically, I'm going to draw some little cells out here so that when I reproduce these, they make a bit of sense. So if I can reproduce those, I'm going to draw them a little big over here. I want to talk about, so these boxes are represented here. So these are the tubule cells. This over here would be the filtrate. I also need to reproduce this peritubular capillary. So I'm going to draw that something like this. Now we've got all these things in our tubule and we got, want to get them back into the blood. So what's the process by which we do that? The first thing I want to talk about is the first step is we've got a sodium potassium ATPase. And if you've had plenty of AMP, you've heard of that one several times. We're going to pump, pump three sodiums in one direction and two potassiums in the other direction. So our first step is pump sodium from filtrate two paratubular capillaries. I'm going to shorten that as caps. Via sodium potassium ATPase. Now obviously what that's going to do is take sodium that's over here, going to keep with the same colors. It's going to move it in this direction. So now we're going to get this sodium over here. Now what do you think is going to happen to the water that's left behind here? I'm just going to draw some blobs of water. If you move sodium in the body, your body is pretty good at moving water in response to that sodium. So this water is going to follow that sodium. H2O follows sodium. Now remember we had a lot of other ions over here too, like we had glucose in here. And this might be a case where it would be easier to animate this, so you're just going to have to imagine that as this water leaves, the volume over here gets smaller, which means we're going to concentrate that glucose. And as long as there's a pathway for that glucose to get this way, it's going to flow that way because the glucose is going to follow the water. Glucose follows water. And other things too, at the same time, I gotta draw them separately, obviously, but these vitamins, when the water leaves, are gonna become more concentrated. And just like the glucose followed the water, they're going to follow the water. So let's just put a general term, like everything else will follow water. And that includes, at a lesser rate, urea urea two and so there, again we've talk, talked several times in the kidney about how there's a fine balance GFR has to be just right well this has to be just right too because if we push too much sodium over we push too much water over it's gonna draw urea over too and this whole rate then hopefully you realize is all dependent on this sodium so let's come over to the other side and point out what would happen I need to redraw these a little bit. And I might just draw it relatively small so that I can get plenty of them in. Because I want to draw four more things. The first thing I want to draw is what if there's really high sodium? And I want to draw what if there's low sodium? And I mean already in the blood. So I got this paratubular capillary over here, and I'm just going to draw this twice. I'm going to say, in the high sodium case, we've got a lot of sodium that's already over here in the blood, and there's less sodium in the low sodium case. One of the things we have to do is we have to pump sodium from over here into the blood. Now that pump can't pump however much it wants, it's going to be limited by how much sodium is over there. So I'm going to draw this arrow a little bit small. I'm trying to draw this arrow smaller than this arrow. Well, if it all hinges on that arrow, 
And that means less potassium in this direction. It also means everything else is less. So there's going to be less water. I'm not going to rewrite it all out, but everything here is going to be less. Less water, less glucose, less everything else like vitamins. And this is not necessarily a bad thing, but less urea too. Now let's go back to that same sodium potassium ATPase and say now there's very little sodium over here. Well now that pump has got very little resistance. It's not pumping against any sodium over here, so it's going to be able to pump lots of sodium that way, lots of potassium this way. What that means then is we'll move plenty of water this way. We'll move plenty of glucose this way. And we'll move plenty of everything else, including technically what we don't want, which is the urea. Now I have a special case of that that might be a little bit difficult to draw, but I'm going to try and do it anyway. And that would be a high protein diet or a high sugar diet. So I said that technically everything smaller than a protein gets filtered, and that's for the most part true. But if you eat a lot of protein, some of that protein will make it through the filtration membrane so you have a lot of protein right here. So I'm trying to draw a lot of protein. Now this isn't completely impermeable, so this is going to come over to the paratubular capillary. And just as sodium will draw water, this will draw water. And if I could put my normal, do my normal amount of sodium, as soon as this water hits it, it's going to dilute that sodium. Now we're going to be back to this situation over here. We've, sorry, to this situation over here. We've diluted the sodium. So now the sodium potassium AP, ATPase can pump lots, lots of potassium this way. And so a high protein diet, I probably should have wrote that, a high protein diet can actually re increase reabsorption of everything else. Which is like, well, that's great. I'm going to get my glucose back over there and I'm going to get everything else back over there. But the other thing you're going to get over there is a lot of urea. So technically a high protein diet, and this green dot could be glucose too if you've got a lot of glucose in your diet, either or are going to cause increased reabsorption of everything. So how much protein you eat can control how much reabsor reabsorption, how much waste products you get back.